Hey guys, this is Sam, and today I want to show you how you can make your iDevice, your iPhone, or your iPad, or your iPod Touch even safer and more secure than before. There's a lot of tips and tricks you might not know about, so let's go ahead and jump in. So first off, a lot of the most important things you can do on your device to make it more secure will happen under Touch ID and Passcode. And the number one most important thing you can do to make your device more secure is to use a passcode in the first place. I am lazy, so I am continually using a four-digit passcode, but in iOS 9 or 10, they introduced a six-digit passcode option, which adds that many more variations of a passcode for somebody to try and enter on your device. So using six is definitely recommended, but the real most secure way to go is to use an alphanumeric passcode. This will get annoying to enter because you're going to have to use a keyboard instead of a number pad when you unlock your device, but you can make this whatever you want, as many characters as you want, as long as you want. If you really want to keep the information on your device safe and make that so it's going to be nearly impossible for somebody to guess or hack unless they really know you, alphanumeric is the way to go. Extremely secure, a little bit complicated, and I'm going to be sticking with four digits myself, but it will make your device a lot harder to get into because while passcode might have four or six digits, alphanumeric can be as long or as complicated or as detailed as you like. So that is the most secure way to go and I'd highly recommend it if you're looking for the highest security. But while you're in here, if you wanna make it harder for people to get into your device, every once in a while there's a glitch that comes up where if you talk to Siri or swipe down on Notification Center and Control Center, there have been some workarounds in the past that allow you easier access to someone's contacts or photos without technically entering a password. So to prevent that from happening or at least making it a lot harder to do, you want to disable access to all of these settings when locked. Today view, recent notifications, control center, Siri, reply with message, home control, wallet, and return missed calls. If you have all those disabled, it'll be a lot harder for somebody to use one of those glitches on your device. And while right now I think iOS 10 and 11 are really stable and secure, there's always the possibility that they could be opened up through some glitch like this in the future. Now next up, you're going to want to be really careful with this one, but enabling erase data will make your device more secure because if somebody would be trying to brute force your passcode, after 10 failed passcode attempts, all of the data on your device will be deleted. So use this option with care, but if you want to be extremely, extremely secure and you have vital or serious information on your device that you want to protect, having that option enabled is a really good idea. I also want to mention enabling Touch ID, and I've heard a lot of mixed reviews on this because I believe it is possible to trick Touch ID, but it's incredibly hard to do, not something that's very easy. So having a passcode on your device is very secure. I use Touch ID because I'm not extremely worried about somebody taking my phone. And there's a new feature in iOS 11 where if you enable emergency SOS and you have Touch ID enabled, maybe while you use Touch ID for the ease of use in a day-to-day -day basis, if you're in an emergency situation and you don't want somebody to be able to put your finger on the fingerprint sensor, you can enable emergency SOS and you'll be good to go. So keep that in mind if you're using Touch ID, but all in all, Touch ID is extremely secure as is. Another big tip when it comes to using passwords is to not use the same password with every service or device that you own. I found myself guilty of this in the past, but if if you want to be the most secure, if you have a Facebook, Twitter, and email account along with an iCloud account or an iPhone or an iPad, you'll want to use a different password on every single one of those accounts because if somebody hacks one, they will not be able to get into your other accounts as well. And honestly, keeping track of these different passwords is really annoying in the first place, so I partnered with LastPass to bring you this video. So LastPass is an online password manager for keeping track of pretty much everything related to your physical or digital life when it comes to usernames and passwords. I first started using a password manager about a year or two ago and it was the greatest decision that I ever made because you don't realize how hard it is to keep track of everything until you enjoy how easy it is to put everything in the same place. LastPass relieves the trouble of looking for passwords and the anxiety around getting locked out of accounts. With LastPass, you don't have to write, remember, or reset passwords. They're going to keep track of everything so that you can stay on top of the game and stay sane. You can put all your passwords on autopilot with LastPass and it's a really great application because it works on your iPhone, it works on your iPad and you can access it on your computer as well. It's very well made, very easy to input all your passwords and usernames. And the best part about the service that makes it worth it for me is that with the iOS app, you can go into any share sheet on your device and access all of your LastPass passwords. And in fact, if you're on Facebook.com or Twitter.com or some domain that you already have registered as a username and password combo, it's going to just show you that one. So you don't have to scroll through a list. If I'm trying to log into Twitter right here, I can tap on the first option once I've entered it into the LastPass database. And then I can log in just like that 
automatically without a hassle whatsoever. So if you're interested in checking out LastPass for yourself, make sure you visit the link down below in the description. Now after I use LastPass to log into Twitter, you probably noticed that I saw an additional screen as well that asked me to enter a second code. That's because I have something called two-step verification enabled and for more security, it's incredibly important. Two-step verification is exactly what it sounds like. You've got the first step, which is your normal email and password, and that's where most services stop. But a lot of services also offer you the option for two-step, and the second step is sending a personalized code to your phone number for additional security. I use this feature pretty much everywhere I can because I like the idea of an extra level of safety across the board on all of my accounts, and it makes getting into your account that much harder for anybody that's trying to hack you. That being said, two-step verification can get a little bit annoying, especially if you're setting up a new iPhone with a ton of different accounts on your device. You're going to have to enter a code for Google and for Facebook and for Twitter and for your Apple ID, and it gets really repetitive and extra really quick. But at the same time, you're paying that price for an extra layer of safety and for me, that is totally worth it. Moving on, another really great feature to make your iOS device more secure that I hope you're already taking advantage of is Find My iPhone. This is so incredibly useful. I had a situation last semester at college where I left my MacBook in a classroom and I had no idea what happened to it. And all I had to do was go on Find My iPhone or Find My MacBook and I could see its exact location precisely on a map because the laptop was connected to Wi-Fi and the same works with your Apple Watch and even AirPods as well. You can ping the device, you can send a message to the device, or if you're really worried about some of the data that's on there, you can even do a remote wipe across the internet. And another really great feature that I would highly recommend enabling is send last location. And the features described is when your device reaches a certain critical battery level, the last known location of your device will be sent to Apple. So if you check on Find My iCloud, you'll be able to see where that device was last spotted before it lost its charge. This is such a great feature. I think it's one of the best parts about owning any Apple product, and I would highly, highly recommend enabling this because it has come in handy way too many times. Next up is another iCloud setting that I would recommend disabling if you really want to be safe about your data. So iCloud backup is extremely convenient because whenever you plug in your device to a charger at night, whether it be your iPhone or your iPad or your iPod Touch, it's going to back up automatically without you even having to do anything on your end. So the convenience factor is totally there and I'm going to keep using it on my devices. But in the past, there have been cases where law enforcement have been able to coerce Apple into revealing some of that data to them, or there's also the possibility of something being in the cloud for it to be accessed by a third party who really shouldn't be looking at that data in the first place. The safest option here is to back up your data through iTunes because it will keep a local copy of all of your data on your computer completely separate from anything in the cloud. The caveat here is that it doesn't happen automatically. You're going to have to manually plugging your device to your computer and back it up through iTunes manually. So it takes a little bit more effort and maybe a little bit more time, but your information is stored on a hard drive rather than somewhere in the cloud. The last thing that I want to share with you in this video is to pay with Apple Pay whenever you can. Now I've heard a lot of people be really sketched out and afraid to put their credit card in their phone, to hold it up to the camera, capture the card number and the security code. Apple's going to get my information, it's going to be a disaster, and then they're going to get hacked and I'm out a credit card. But I want to tell you that all of that is a lie and to just trust me on this one. When you put a credit card into your device through Apple Pay, your credit card number is not permanently stored on Apple's servers. It's only there for a very short amount of time. This is how they explain it on their website. Basically, you take a picture of your card or you enter the information and it's sent to Apple. Apple is going to encrypt that data and then decrypt it once they receive it and then they're going to send it to your bank and then your bank is going to re-encrypt it and send it back to Apple and Apple can't read it. It's going to be encrypted still to the point where Apple doesn't understand understand what it's saying, only somebody else from the bank could understand the information that has been encrypted, but that is going to be stored on your secure element on your device, which is a physical piece of hardware dedicated to storing sensitive information. It is not added to iCloud, it is not sent to Apple servers, and nobody can read it but you or your bank to verify payments. What makes Apple Pay even more secure is that every time you make a purchase, a unique device account number is used. You can view it when you tap on the little I on any of your credit cards that you've already added. It doesn't use your actual credit card number when you make a transaction at the store. It uses a randomized number and a completely dynamic security code, that's the little code on the back of your card, every single time to validate and make a transaction go through. So for everybody that thought Apple Pay was a bad idea, that thought it was less secure than a credit card, it's actually a lot more secure. And if you've ever been worried about a debit card number getting stolen, using Apple Pay makes that next to impossible to do. I've never heard one situation yet after Apple Pay's been out for almost two years 
of somebody getting their credit card hacked from Apple Pay because it's so secure and it's using a different number each and every single time. So that is going to wrap up all the safety and security tips that I have for your iOS devices right now. If you enjoyed the video, as always, it would really help me out if you took just a second to hit that like button below. And of course, hit subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future. I've been Sam. I hope all of you are doing great and I'll talk to you later.